Hello and welcome back to Grey Ghost Outdoors. Today we are building a backpacking first aid kit. Alright, so a little background. I'm a nationally registered EMT and I'm also an Eagle Scout. So I've been on multiple backpacking trips along um, different trails, including going to Philmont for a 12 day trek. So today we're going over what I would put in a backpacking first aid kit through all of those experiences and what I've seen on the trail. All right, so let's get into it. Um, most of this stuff can be found at a, a Target or a Walgreens, anything um, like a convenience store that's really close to you. And you can customize this in any way that you want, um, depending on your needs and what um, level of backpack, what level of activity that you're going to be doing. So first thing is a triangular bandage. Um, these have various uses. Um, the main thing that they can be used is a sling, but they are just a good bandage to have for anything that is orthopedic in nature. So it can be used to tie a, a splint, or it can be used to um, make a sling and swath. So next we have two ace bandages and they're pretty obvious in use. They're just an elastic bandage um, that can be used for any sprains or your broken bones and they can also be used to wrap up something within a, uh, a splint. And then we got some rolled gauze. This is a pretty heavy rolled gauze. Um, that has, again, various uses. It can be used as a, um, a replacement for a triangular bandage or the ace bandage, and it can also be used to um, stem uh, major bleeding. Uh, speaking of bleeding, I have a, um, a ABD pad in here, and this is for your bigger bleeding and uh, when you have a lot of it and need to make sure it stops. All right, so that was the bigger, bulkier stuff. Now I move on to the smaller and more comfort items. So these are called callus cushions. I picked them up at um, Target, and I worked at a summer camp where a bunch of kids were getting blisters, and these were really cool when I found them, and they work perfectly. Um, I don't really like moleskin. It seems to have never worked in my experience and always just comes off. Uh, and the adhesive on these aren't very, isn't very good either, but they are a little thicker and they do the same thing that moleskin is supposed to. So when you put this on and you wrap it in either duct tape or medical tape, um, it really gets the job done really well. All right, speaking of that, I have duct tape. Um, I have these in a lot of my kits and they're just, re it's just really great. I've take a roll of Gorilla Tape and wrap it around like an old credit card or an old uh, gift card. And it uh, folds out really flat and is really, really useful for a ton of different applications. Uh, next is some Vaseline. Uh, and I think that I've uh, seen a bunch of doctors and physicians saying that uh, Neosporin isn't really helpful. Uh, so. And instead, they recommend using Vaseline. Um, in my experience, it has helped me, uh, ha has helped cuts um, heal faster. Uh, that's just my experience. Um, if you prefer Neosporin, go out and grab it. Um, but yeah, so I, I chose to put Vaseline instead of Neosporin in here. All right, so now to the smaller stuff that's self-contained. Um, here I have an Advil container. You can find these at like any drugstore or any... Um, a convenience store and it's like a nice resealable container um, where you can store your Advil and in here I have Advil of course but I also have Tylenol and aspirin so I put four Tylenol um, which is about uh, I think this would be partial more than one dose of um, Tylenol and then we have um, aspirin and there are four of that and that's a full dose of aspirin. Um, you don't have to carry aspirin if you don't uh, think it's going to be necessary. Uh, I use it, I carry it primarily for um, its cardiac applications. Um, 
and that's not going to really apply to you if you're if you don't have a history of cardiac issues or if you're really young but as an EMT I like to be prepared for people uh, that I come across as well here we have a Benadryl itch stick uh, same place you can usually pick these up they're a little harder to find but if you know what you're looking for you can find them um, and I swear by these these are great for anywhere you go with a bunch of mosquitoes they're a lifesaver at summer camps for me because mosquitoes seem to love me so um, this really helps. It's a little bit extra weight, but I think it's worth it in my part for the comfort it provides. All right, so other than this pouch, the last thing is a, a liquid IV thing, and this is to replace your electrolytes for someone who's really dehydrated or um, bordering on hypo, hyponatremia. Uh, a great thing to carry in your first aid kit. I have one in my first aid kit and one in my um, bag as well as some of my backpack. Um, I think they're really important for whenever you're going on a backpacking trip or going outside. All right, so now this is my little ouchy boo boo um, and more medications pouch. So I have some normal size band-aids. I like the band-aid brand because they seem to have always sticked better. Um, some bigger size band-aids, and a, some little uh, four, two by two gauze pads. Now this is not definitely not gonna stop your major bleeding at all. That's what this is for. Um, but when you have small bleeds and for nosebleeds, I found that these are about the right size. I also have gloves and pretty self-explanatory. I have some waterproof band-aids for any time that we're doing a water adventure or we're going to be crossing multiple streams. And now moving on to the last bit, we have some medications. All right, so this is an anti-diarrheal. Kind of really sucks if you get diarrhea on the trail and can be even dangerous and life-threatening. So anti-diarrheals. Um, these are some Pepto-Bismol um, for vomiting and, and um, stomach issues, and some Benadryl for your uh, allergic reactions and hives and stuff like that, as well as some, some Tums. And I also included a little uh, note card that I cut down that has all of the expiration dates of the medications that are in here, as well as this medication that doesn't have the Pepto-Bismol also doesn't have an expiration date on it. So I think that's really important. It helps you uh, keep your kit ready. And I had that on the outside, basically facing the outside on the inside of the plastic bag. So uh, I can easily check to see if my medications are expiring so I can make sure that the, the bag is stocked. All right, so moving on to some extra items other than this. Uh, a SAM splint. Um, SAM splints have been becoming more and more prevalent, um, and I think they're great, especially in a wilderness environment. They can do a lot of different applications. They can be a splint like they're made for, they can also be a C, C collar, and you can just use a bunch of different applications for it. So if you're wor willing to sacrifice the weight, I think that they're a great thing to carry, and they, they pack down about the same size as the kit that I made, um, so just fit easily into the outside of my backpack. All right, some other stuff. So I think uh, notepads are really good. Uh, this is a medical notepad that I use um, as an EMT. Uh, it's a little more specialized, and um, but if you're willing to pay for it, I think it's a great for um, any first aid environment, or just a normal right in the rain um, universal pad, help you jot down the notes um, that you need to tell first responders when they get there. Of course, a pen to go along with them. I don't keep them in my in my first aid kit because, well, I keep them on other places. But uh, if that's the only place you can store it, store it inside your first aid kit. Um, and lastly. Uh, last two things, um, there's a cat tourniquet. Uh, this is pretty much the gold standard for tourniquets um, right now. 
uh, the combat application tourniquet. Um, and for any major bleeding, if you're going hunting or any place that's really, really far away from medical attention, I suggest um, bringing one of these for yourself because at that point, um, if you don't have one, there's not really uh, much that you or anyone around you could do. And lastly, an emergency blanket. So hypothermia is a really concerning thing when we get into um, major bleeding and trauma scenarios. And that's major, mostly what you're gonna come in contact with in the outdoors. Um, so I think emergency blankets are really, really important. Uh, so if you, do, I carry one in my essentials bag. Um, I'll link that video here. If you wanna go check what out, check out what I put in that. But um, if you don't carry one anywhere else, I suggest carrying one in your first aid kit. All right, thank you for watching guys. I have another video on other first aid kits that I made and carry, um, and I'll link that up here. Um, but yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.